The government of Ghana, through the Ministry of Communications, is currently developing a robust framework to support our digitization efforts. Ghana's population of about 28 million people has over 20 internet service providers and an average download speed of 4.78 megabits per second. We intend to scale up our universal access program to ensure that we narrow or even close the digital divide and drive down the cost of accessing data. We are establishing a network of connected community information centers and modernized post offices to serve as e-services centers and bring government closer to the people. We're currently implementing a robust e-government program to promote transparency and accountability in the conduct of government. And this covers all sectors of administration in health, education, business and finance, immigration, environmental monitoring. And to demonstrate our resolve, within nine months of taking office, the government has launched a state-of-the-art 12-digit biometric national ID card enhanced with new technologies, including tactile elements for the visually impaired, e-passport and payment applications. We've also launched the National Digital Property Addressing System, which was developed locally, which maps out every five square meters of our territory and tax it digitally, providing every Ghanaian with a unique digital address, permanent digital address linked to postcodes. The introduction of a paperless port, integrated e-immigration system, e-procurement, e-parliament, e-justice, e-cabinet, a safe city solution, and smart workplaces, among other initiatives, which are all at various stages of implementation. The development of an interoperability framework to integrate government databases and a system to link all electronic payment platforms and scale up mobile money usage all represent significant milestones in Ghana's journey to digitalization. As we become increasingly dependent on the use of ICTs, we are scaling up our cybersecurity efforts, working with stakeholders across the country and internationally to build resilience and ensure we're operating in safe cyberspaces and enacting policies to protect our children online. However, much as we try to protect ourselves, our efforts will be fruitless without a robust international legal regime to address the continuing threats of cybercrime and cyber-enabled crimes. We need something akin to a Geneva Convention Against Cybercrime to protect us all from cyber criminals and adventurers who threaten our collective cyber peace and security. 